So today I'm doing a potting up video that really just is me potting a bunch of plants I just bought from Camilla's House Plants. So if you've seen my last video, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I believe I have eight plants here to pot up. I know that's a lot. And so tell my boyfriend. We've had a talk a bunch of times. So I'm just using a couple different pots today. One of my favorites are brown terracotta. I don't have a problem with moisture plants in them just because I keep on top of watering. And if I ever overwater, the terracotta soaks it out so I don't have an issue. As long as you remember to water it and don't forget, then your soil should be fine. Another pot that I'm using, I just bought three of these for my anthurias, which is I was looking for something a bit more ornate. So this is what I chose and I completely love these. <laughs> and then I just got a couple round bowls that I'm going to plant in one of these for my melanocrysum. <laughs> Eventually I'm going to get a moss pole for it and just have a completely different planter. But for now, this is what it's going in because I didn't expect such a gigantic one, which is amazing, but I did not expect it. <laughs> so the type of potting soil I'm using, and it's for, these are all tropical plants, still dendrons and ethereums, is this potting soil from repotme.com. It's their classic blend for their tropical plants. So what it has in it, it has orchid bark, it has perlite, there's some charcoal and coir in it, or coir. <laughs> but what it was is I found this because I got into anthuriums pretty quickly and I actually didn't have a soil for them. So I kind of just searched the internet for something and I found this and I actually really love it. And it's already freshly mixed together for you. So I feel that I don't even have to do anything for that. And until a plant complains otherwise, this is what I'm going with. So the first one, now I gotta really decide who's going where. So I have these three ornate pots. I'm trying to figure out which ones to put in. So initially I thought, oh, I want some Doriakis in them. The Magnificum would look really pretty. So maybe I'll actually put the Doriakis and the Magnificum in there. Cause I feel that my Queen Anthurium just kinda outclasses this thing. I mean, it's a classy pot for a queen, but I'm thinking she's gonna go in something a bit bigger. I'm gonna remove the sphagnum moss from the roots. So here we have our gorgeous Doriaki crystallinum hybrid. And since it's freshly mixed, um, it's a little bit moist, the soil. I still go ahead and water it, but um, not too thoroughly. Actually, if you order this soil, and you wanna store it, they actually recommend you dry it out a bit because they do pre-soak the coir or coir. <laughs> My gosh, she's got some big roots. It's actually bigger than I thought. This is so cute. But yeah, I don't know if I showed you the roots, but look at the roots on that. Super impressive. All right, so I did wanna take this time to do a little bit of background on why I started collecting plants. I've always had plants in my life, but I've never been too crazy about them. Like I've, I've liked them, but I guess I've just been exposed to the ones around me. So I've never really went crazy. There was nothing particularly interesting in my area. And really the world of online plant shopping has opened up so many doors in that sense. I think it's absolutely wonderful that we can find all these plants. And there was actually a good amount of time where I didn't even watch YouTube, like a good five years probably. Um, so uh, when I went back and I saw they have ads, I'm like, what is this? I was like, I'm not watching these, but um, I did anyway. And then I found plant YouTubers and I became obsessed. So <laughs> really I started watching plant YouTube videos for helpful tips because I started collecting more plants and I was just looking for something that kind of validate my care for them. And then I became really interested in just looking at them. Just being on Instagram and seeing all these gorgeous plants, that's really something that I love and enjoy doing. So I just made an Instagram a couple months ago for my plants. And I've been on and off it a little bit, so I've been kind of bad. <laughs> but I don't know, it's just something that once you get into is really enjoyable. Especially watching them grow. It's, Definitely satisfying. So this next one here is just my regular Doriaki. Trying not to make a complete mess. So this one won't even be a problem to pot up. It actually has much less root, but that's completely okay because it'll thrive anyway. Super adorable. Honestly, I was getting worried that these pots might be too small. But I think we should probably downgrade this pot for this plant. 
But I just love this plant so much and I really want my Doriakis in the same kind of pot. And really, I just gotta make sure I don't overwater it. But these pots I just got at a local nursery. Really love the look. And the look of these guys in it, absolutely stunning. Crystallina Magnificum. Really excited for that. It's just such a pop. I feel like a lot of my pots are pretty like minimal because I like to keep a clean space. But I wanted to do something for my anthuriums just because they're so stunning. So bougie looking plants go in bougie looking pots. And there's our Crystallina Magnificum. Such a stunner. <laughs> my little trio. God, I'm absolutely in love with all of these. I want to say I'm just a mess today with potting, but I'm not. I'm a mess every day. Every time I pot, it's constant. I'm cleaning up soil all the time. I just think it's a um, losing war. Why fight it? I used to try. <laughs> now I just gave up. <laughs> oh no. So that's my three cuties. And I'll go ahead and clean their leaves a little later. I'm just gonna get all these guys potted up first. So the next one that I'm going to do is my Lovely, lovely Queen Anthurium. Just gonna lay you down. I'm sorry, I know you probably don't like it. Original plan for this girl ain't gonna work out. I don't know why I thought she was uh, gonna fit, but I mean, actually she does fit, you know what? That's like really not an issue, okay. When she gets a little bigger, she's definitely gonna be repotted, but at the moment, she can chill in this pot for now. There she goes. Oh, I'm a mess. Okay, it's a heavy girl. And there she is in her pot. <laughs> and I have my little guy, my philodendron, the gigas or gigas. See how big your roots are, little guy. I feel like I underestimate them all the time. So actually, this guy is more aerial root than root. Gently lift up his leaves. I just gently pat it into place. I don't go crazy. Little guy. All right. I'm gonna do one of my philodendron ghosts. Whoa, look at this. Here's my regular philodendron ghost. I don't know why, but sometimes when I uh, just clean off the roots off the plants, I expect them something to like hiss at me as if like it has living creature inside. I don't know, it could. Could be a hidden one. No one knows about. Gosh, it stems feel so nice. This one looks like a worm and it doesn't want to stay down. Oh, look at that. You guys get to stare at them a little bit. All right, so my next one's gonna be my Philodendron Ghost Mint. And I'm actually getting another one of these with more variegation in it. I'm thinking to put them in the same pot. But for now, I gotta get this guy potted up because the other one won't be shipped out until next week. So if you notice here, got my aerial roots on the side stems and then the rest is just root. So I'm just gonna leave these guys out. You know, I actually might end up chopping them off. You are allowed to remove aerial roots. Some people like to keep them. I have cats, so if they get too long, I really don't want them to chew on them, particularly because philodendrons are toxic to cats. So I just wanna be really careful when I do that. For now, I will keep it centered. I was gonna put it to the side, but and I changed my mind. <laughs> I didn't expect to go to that whole bag, but honestly, I don't know why I didn't. It's eight plants here. We have one more, and it's my melanoprizum, which is pretty big. So um, I know I have a second bag that's partially full that I'm gonna go need to get. Gosh, isn't that stunning? Absolutely obsessed with this one. Look at it. Just, just look at it. Plants are amazing. They really are. Like how stunning. And my cats are fighting in the background. I got one that has like a superiority complex, but he's like the weakest link of the house. Yo, again, big and mighty. Don't be bad. Feel six like I don't care. Oh, look, he's so cute. He's like, what are all these plants? Oh no, they're taking over. He's running. He's like, mom doesn't let me on the counter. 
What are you doing? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, Phil. I know I confused you. Oh my gosh. I kind of forgot how big this one was. Look at this melanocrysum. Get the queen on the side. Melanocrysum. Hi. I am uh, hoping the pot is big enough. Just so big. Like, what is... He's like a staff. He's like, I don't know. Yeah, he'll fit. Getting tired of potting. Oh, plants. You can tell I'm getting lazy. Wow, I just knocked him right off the top. That's a, that's a life. I gotta redo this. This is what happens when you get lazy and you just wanna pour it from the bag. You just pour it straight on the countertop. Too much, guys. All right, that's it for repotting and now time to clean the leaves. All right, so this last part of when I get plants is usually just when I clean my leaves. I just make my own mixture of leaf cleaner and I just add majority water, a couple drops of Castile soap, and then a couple drops of mint. What this does is just help keep pests away and it cleans the leaves. So what I do is just get a microfiber cloth. It's a gentler touch for them too. And you just take a leaf and then I clean the top side and the underside. Always inspect your plants when you first get them. You really don't want to bring any pests home. And if you do have pests, don't essentially just get rid of the plant, but you want to help treat it and at least quarantine it for a while until those pests are gone. Luckily with this method, I haven't had a real issue. Yes, don't be crazy. And this stuff smells great because you put a couple drops of mint in, they just got the scent of mint everywhere. It's wonderful. Don't put too much mint. Too much mint is headache inducing. But you also want to do this not when you just get the plant, but every so often. You know, some people do it monthly. Some people uh, have the time to do it weekly. Or if they have large collections, do, you know, so many a week and then just throughout the month. It helps you kind of bond with the plant, in my opinion. Not only bond with the plant, but you know it's clean. And if something's clean, you feel better about it right away. All right, Doriaki. What am I doing? You're crazy. There's a little guy looking pretty cute. These <laughs> philodendron gigas leaves are extremely delicate. I did not expect that. I feel like I could tear this so easy. It kind of scares me very velvety. I had I have velvet plants, but never one so fine. And when you clean your plants, just make sure you're getting the grooves. I feel like a lot of people forget about that center groove, but a lot of dust does accumulate there. And dust, you know, attracts spider mites. Man, you just feel like you're not gonna like this. So also another thing, and I'm not gonna do this right now, but for anyone that does happen to have hard water stains, I'll go back with a half lemon concentrate, half water solution, and I'll just use that to clean off the hard water stains. So I'm definitely finding this Queen Anthurium difficult to clean. It's like it's working against me. <laughs> clean looks pretty good. I'm gonna get the status of the plant too. Just make sure to glide down gently. Look at them three leaves. Look at her. Got her, but keep her alive. I'm so scared. My wonderful philodendron flower host. My philodendron flower host nymphed. Also, I need to buy a stake because I can't get this guy to sit up. I'm getting top heavy. New leaves I don't typically touch. He's a bit too fresh. I get worried that touching new leaves can hurt them. Gorgeous. If you're gonna buy any kind of Florida ghost from Camilla's House of Plants, please get them in. This is my last guy. Melanocrysum. You can't even see him. Sorry about that, I just adjusted it so you could actually see him. He's quite tall. Oh, his backside's so much easier to clean. He's like, feel me and my glossiness. I am majestic. Okay. So that was the last one. 
But for now, what I'm going to do is water them all. And what I like to do with new plants is water them in a hydrogen peroxide mix. So I do it one part hydrogen peroxide and then four parts water. So I just usually use um, a mason jar. You can use a regular measuring cup, but I feel like I go through too many measuring cups. So get to one cup. And what the hydrogen peroxide mixture does is if there's any kind of like fungus gnats or anything like that, uh, it does help to kill them. You need an extreme amount, or at least a decent amount of hydrogen peroxide in order to really hurt the plant. Sorry, I literally literally forgot the word watering can. That was a that was a thing. And if you hear a bit of a, a sizzling coming from your soil when you're watering it with this mixture, it's normal. You don't have to be scared. And I always use pots with drainage holes, or at least a nursery pot with a cash pot. I'm just like my queen here is sitting in hers. That way they're not sitting in water because that's really like the worst thing you can do for any plant, they don't like to sit in water. Their legs don't like to be wet. Think about it. If you're outside in the rain and your legs get soaked, how happy are you? How happy are you? But yeah, keep them happy, guys. Yeah. I'm getting water on my countertop. I just do them to like just strain. And look at these waylas. Look at them. I've got plant fam. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. So like, comment, or subscribe if you like my video. I really appreciate any kind of feedback for future videos. Thank you so much and it has been a pleasure filming this video again.